Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the recorded lecture on the simplex method. Uh, the entirety of this lecture is going to be me performing the steps that are described on slide 85 of 93 from lecture 3. Uh, so you can follow along with, with this slide here and I'm going to take three problems and I'm just going to apply the steps here to solve them all by hand with no Wolfram Alpha, MATLAB, anything like that. Um, so the steps here, I'll, I'll read them off to you before we, we get into the example, but you're, you're given as usual a standard form linear program. And I'd also give you an initial corner to start at, which would be given by you know, choosing your basic variables or, or telling you what the basic variables are to start. And I give you that. And then given those, uh, that information, the simplex method is described in these steps here. So the first step, is you write the inputs in a what's called a tableau uh, and I'll show you how to draw that uh, how to write that it's, it's really just putting the inputs in a table I said the upper right corner gets a zero I'll show you what I mean by that <clears throat> uh, use Gauche elimination use a row in particular row reduction to reduce the expression in terms of the basic variables b okay that's that's usually the longest part of the the actual algorithm is getting everything set up just right um, and then after you do that, that's marked as step zero. That's like the, the basic thing that you do to start. And then um, the steps here are the uh, iterations of the algorithm and they look like this. So you, you, you've got your tableau and you ask, are there any negative objective coefficients? So you look at the objective function and you look for a negative term. If there aren't, then you're done and you can recover the optimal solution from the tableau in a way that I'll show you once we get to that point. If there are negative objective coefficients, then you're not done. And so uh, what that means is whatever variable has a negative coefficient corresponds to the new variable that you want to increase. That's the non-basic variable that you want to put into your basic set. So you want to increase that, and you'd like to know how much can you increase it. Right? As you increase it, since it's got a negative objective coefficient, it means you'd like to make it as big as you can, and uh, you want to see how much you can do that. Uh, so what you do is you perform the, the minimum ratio test, uh, and I'll, I'll execute those steps here, but um, you do that by dividing the rightmost column of the tableau by the strictly positive, I put this in bold there, the strictly positive entries in the column for your incoming variable. Again, I'm going to work through all this in an example. I'm just reading this off to you so you know what to expect. Um, and you choose whichever of those uh, ratios is the smallest, and that tells you what the variable is that leaves. And then you do a new set of Gaussian elimination um, so that the incoming variable only appears in one row and you have zeros everywhere else in, uh, in that column. And then once you've done that, you're at a new corner and you go back to this uh, to uh, step one. Okay, so the basic, the way a simplex iteration looks is you look for negative objective coefficients, you compute um, a bunch of ratios, you look at whichever ratio is the smallest, and then you do Gaussian elimination. Okay, so it's those three steps over and over again. Look for a negative coefficient, compute a bunch of ratios with a minimum ratio test, and do Gaussian elimination. That's every iteration of the simplex method looks like that, and that's what's going on in here. So my goal is to get you to the point where you're so familiar with this process that you're bored of it by the end of this lecture here. Um, I'll start with this example here for this linear program, which I think you can read. That looks pretty good. Uh, minimize negative x1 minus 2x2 plus 2x3. And you have uh, 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 2x3 equals 8. And 3x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 plus x4 equals 9. And everything has to be non-negative. And we will start at the corner... Uh, with the basic set being x1 and x3. So I'd write b equals 1 and 3. That's going to be the corner that we will start at. And now I'll show you what you do. With the linear program written this way in front of me, the first step, as is written in that slide, is to build a simplex tableau. Now what is a tableau? It's just me writing down all of these values in a little table with that all the x's on it. Okay, so what you do to build the tableau is you write your objective function coefficients in the first row. So minus 1, minus 2, 2. So minus 1, minus 2, 
to, oh, and there's an x4, so there's a zero coefficient for x4. And then you write down your terms here and your terms here for these rows. So I'd copy down two, 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 zero, eight, two, 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 zero, eight, and three, two, one, one, nine, three, two, one, one, nine. Remember on that slide I had this, I wrote the, I wrote the upper right corner gets a zero. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the numbers I wrote out here, the upper right corner is empty because I was writing the right-hand side vector in, in this far right column. Uh, in other words, that's the other side of the equals sign, but the very first row is just the objective function. There was no equals on the other side of that, so I didn't write anything here. So I'd write a zero there. That's, that's all that meant. When I said the upper right corner gets a zero, I just meant you write a zero there. Okay, and I'll, uh, I like to draw a little line here to separate the objective function from the constraints because uh, these sort of represent different things. And then finally, uh, I write in the indices for the basic variables here. So my basic set is one and three, so I'd write x1 here and x3 here like that. And I usually just write a b in there to remind myself of what those things are. This is, uh, this is the first step to writing a simplex tableau. If you go back to that slide here, I then said use Gaussian elimination to reduce the expression in terms of the basic variables. What does that mean here? In this context, that means I want to use Gaussian elimination to reduce this tableau in terms of x1 and x3. Okay, because those are my basic variables. What do I mean by reduce it? What I mean is I've got this row here associated with x1, because I wrote that one down first, and I'm going to have this row here associated with x3. Okay, so this row is x1, this row is x3. Of course, uh, this first column, I've got four variables, and each column corresponds to one of those variables. So the first column corresponds to x1, and the third column corresponds to x3, not surprisingly. And when I say uh, reduce the expression, reduce the tableau, using Gaussian elimination, as I said in point zero there, what I mean is I want to have a one right here, because this is the row and the column for x1, and I want to have zeros there and there. And since this is the row for x3 and this is the column for x3, I'd like to have a one here and zeros here and here. So that's what it means when I say do row reduction. So let's do some of that row reduction uh, right now. Oops, and I just bumped this here. So as I said, I want to have a one here and zeros here and here. So to get a one here, that's easy. I divide this whole row by two. That turns this two into a one. So this two becomes a one. This two becomes a one. This two becomes a one. The zero stays a zero. This eight becomes a four. And now I want a zero up there and I want a zero down there. To get a zero up here is easy. I take this row and I add it to this row, right? Because minus one was one is zero. So what happens when I add this row to that one? What do I get? This minus one becomes a zero as I wanted it to. Minus two and one is minus one. Two and one is three. Zero and zero is zero. Zero and four is four. Similarly, I'd like to have a zero here. So what does that mean? It means I take this row and I subtract three times this row up there. So I'll take three minus three times one is of course zero as I want it to be. Two minus three times one is negative one. One minus three times one is negative two. One minus three times zero is one. Nine minus three times four is negative three. Good, now I've done all the reduction needed with respect to x1, I've got a one here and zeros here and there. And I need to do the same thing for x3. x3 I wanna have, um, this is the row for x3 and this is the column for x3 because it's the third column. So instead of a negative two, I'd like a one here and I want zeros here and here. So first of all, I'll take this whole row and I'll divide it by negative two to turn this into a one. So zero on negative two is still zero. Negative one on negative two is positive one half. Negative two on negative two, of course, is one. One on negative two is negative one half. And negative three on two is uh, positive three halves. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So now all I need to do is turn this into a zero and this into a zero. 
To turn this into a zero, I've got a one there and a one there, so I take this row and I subtract this one from it. So one minus zero is one, one minus one half is one half, one minus one is zero, as I wanted it to be. Zero minus negative one half is positive one half. And four minus three halves is five halves. And then the last thing that I need to do is, remember I was reducing in this column here. So I've got a one and a zero there, and I need a zero up there as well. So I take this row and I subtract three times this row, because I've got a three and a one there. So it's gonna be zero minus three times zero is zero. Negative one minus three times one half is negative five halves. Uh, three minus three times one, of course, is zero, as I want it to be. And zero minus three times minus one half is uh, positive three halves. So that becomes a three halves there and four minus three times three halves is four minus uh, nine halves, which is negative one half. Okay, and now this is a simplex tableau. I've now reduced things. I've got a table here with a bunch of uh, values. It's, it's effectively a matrix that I've reduced in terms of x1 in this row and x3 in this row. I'll copy this down here below uh, because things are getting pretty messy. I'm just gonna copy it right down here. And this is the exact same thing. I just copied it up there so things are a little bit cleaner. So at this point, I've just performed step zero. And this is now called a simplex tableau. After I've done that reduction, this is, this is a, a simplex tableau. And now I perform this, uh, these iterations down here. Okay, and remember those three iterations are look for negative objective coefficients, uh, and then if no, you're done, and if yes, then you have, uh, if you have a negative coefficient, that tells you which variable should increase. We're calling that in these slides x sub i. You do the minimum ratio test, which I'll show you how to do to determine the exiting variable, and then you do Gaussian elimination to um, reduce that tableau um, with respect to the new variable. Okay, so I'll show you how these steps work here. So I have a tableau and I ask myself, am I done? And of course, no, I'm not done. There's a negative five halves right here. So I like to draw a little arrow to say, ah, okay, uh, X2, because this is the second column, X2 is going to enter my basic set, which means that either X1 or X3 is going to leave. And the way you determine which one of those is doing the minimum ratio test, which I'm going to do for you now, it's very simple. So this is my incoming variable here, X2. What I do to, to determine which of these variables is going to leave is I look at the right-hand uh, column, or actually more to be precise, I look at the right-hand column that's um, below that top corner there. I look at this part and I look at each of these terms and I divide them by these terms here. And um, I only, I, I take these terms and I divide them anytime this value here is strictly positive. Okay, in this case, both of these values are strictly positive, so I would do it for both of these. But if one of these were zero or one of these was negative, I wouldn't perform this test on that particular entry. We'll get to that in a minute. For now, I'll just do the steps as I describe them, which is that you take each of these values and you divide by these values. So I take five halves divided by one half, which of course is five. And I take three halves divided by one half, which of course is three. And I look, ask which of those ratios is smallest. Of course, three is the smallest. And so therefore I conclude that X3 is going to leave my basic set and X2 is going to enter. And so what that means is that I need to change this tableau here. Right now the tableau, as based on the reduction that I did before, is in terms of X1 and X3. But now I'm saying I'm going to increase X2 and X3 is going to leave which means I reduce this tableau to be in terms of X1 and X2. So what that means is that instead of having a one here and zeros there, I now need to have a one here and zeros there and there. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do that row reduction. Now, the first thing you might do is you'd say, I wanna have a one here, but I have a one half, so I should multiply this row by two. Since I've also got one half and five halves up there, negative five halves up there, um, Instead, I'm going to keep this row as it is, 
and modify these rows, and then I'll go back and multiply this by, by two. Okay, so I wanna have a one here, and I want zeros there and there. Well, to get a zero up here is easy. I take this row, and I subtract this row, because I have one half and one half on each of those. So I'll do that now. I'll take this row, and I'll subtract one half uh, from each of these. Oh, sorry, I'll take this row, and I'll subtract this row from it. So one minus zero is one, one half minus one half is zero, zero minus one is negative one, one half minus negative one half is one, and five halves minus three halves is one. Let's write a one there. And I'll scratch this out. For now. These are those ratios I computed, which I'm not gonna touch anymore. So I'll throw those away as well. Good, I've got a zero there, and I want a zero up here as well. So what does that mean? It means I, I have a five halves here, a negative five halves here, and a one half here. So I should take this row and add five times this row, because that would turn the one half into a five halves and cancel that out. So I'll take this row and I'll add to it five times this row. So zero plus five times zero is zero, minus five halves plus five times one half is zero as I wanted it to be. Zero plus five times one is five, three halves, uh, plus five times one half is negative one, and negative one half plus five times three halves is uh, positive seven. And then the last step I'll do is I've got, uh, remember I was, I was reducing it for this column here, and I wanted to have a one there and zeros here and here. I've got those two zeros, so I just need to turn this into a one, which means I multiply this row by two. So this one half becomes a one, this one becomes a two, this negative one half becomes a negative one, and this three halves becomes a three. Okay, and now I've got a tableau that's expressed in terms of x1 and x2. And so I'll take that x3, and since I've now changed that from being a, a column for x, a row for x3, and now a row for x2, I'll write an x2 in there. Okay, and that's that's the whole iteration. That's, that's a full simplex iteration there. I went from uh, x1, x3 to x1, x2. And now I repeat this process. And so to repeat the process, you ask, am I done? Here I'm not done because I have a negative coefficient. Up there, there's a minus one. Uh, before I move further, I'm gonna copy this table down again because I've got a lot of stuff written there. So I'll copy this table down and we'll, we'll go from there. Now, this is my uh, nicer looking tableau. I've just copied everything I had up there and written it down here. And so now, I do those iterations again. I say, are there any negative objective coefficients? Uh, if yes, then we do the minimum ratio test to figure out which variable leaves. And then we do Gaussian elimination to, um, to express things in terms of that new variable. Okay, so I've got my tableau here based on those previous steps that I just did, and I ask, am I done? Is there a negative objective coefficient? Yes, there is. X4 has a minus one. So X4 is gonna enter my basic set, and that means either X1 or X2 is going to leave. And so to determine which one, we perform the minimum ratio test. The minimum ratio test, again, is where I take these terms here, the one and the three, and I divide them by the strictly positive entries of the, sorry, over here, of the uh, incoming, of the column for the incoming variable, okay? So I take one divided by one, that's one. And I say I have three here and a negative one there. There's a minus sign there, so I don't bother to compute this ratio. I don't consider that. It means uh, x2 doesn't care about uh, increasing uh, x4, so I don't compute that ratio there. Well, that means the only ratio I have to work with uh, is the one for x1, and therefore I conclude that x1 is going to uh, leave the basic set. So x1 is going to leave, and uh, x4 is going to enter, and so I perform uh, Gaussian elimination on this tableau now to reduce things uh, in terms of x4 and x2. Uh, right now I have things in terms of x1 and x2. And so I want to take this row here, and this row should now be, uh, should now be um, in terms of, of x4. So what does that mean? It means I want to have a 1 here, which I already have, which is great, and I want to have a 0 up there and a 0 down there. Okay, well this is a really nice one for me because I've just got negative 1s here and here. 
So that means all I have to do is take this row and add this one to it. And similarly, I take this row and I add this one to it. So let's do that now. We'll start, we'll do the bottom one first, I guess. Well, zero and one is one. One and zero is one. Two and minus one is one. Minus one and one is zero, as I wanted it to be. And three and one is four. Okay, and so uh, again, I wanted this to be in terms of, uh, I wanted this row to be uh, for x4, which means I wanna have a one here and a zero there and a zero up there. So the last step is I take this row and I add this middle one to it. So zero and one is one, zero and zero is zero, five and minus one is four, minus one and one is zero as I wanted it to be, seven and one is eight. Okay, and then the last thing I do, I take this x1 and now I'd write that as being x4 instead. Okay, uh, I've created a bit of a mess so I'll copy the table down here. There's b, there's x4, there's x2, and uh, 1, 0, 4, 0, 8, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 1, and then a 1, 1, 1, 0, 4. Okay? And that completes that iteration. Now I've got things in terms of x4 and x2. And so I perform an iteration again. I look at this and I say, am I done? In this case, I am done because there aren't any negative objective coefficients. There's only a one and a four and the rest are zeros. So I am done. Uh, and so now all I have to do is explain to you from this tableau, how do I recover what the actual solution is to the linear program? That's extremely simple. It works like this. The right-hand side vector here, this stuff, below, below the upper right-hand corner, these two terms here, one and four, those are the optimal values of these variables here. So my optimal solution has x2 equal to four, uh, x4 is equal to one, and the other two variables are zero. x3 is zero and x1 is zero. That's my optimal solution. And if you wanna know what's the optimal objective value uh, at this solution, all you do is you take this value and you flip its sign. So in this case, the objective value is negative eight. And that's how you solve linear programs by hand using the simplex method. Here's a second example. Uh, this one now has five variables and three constraints. This was actually on last year's midterm, and uh, most people uh, thought it was pretty straightforward. It's actually set up pretty nicely. So this is three variables, sorry, five variables, three constraints. Uh, it's written there, I don't need to dictate it to you. So again, let's do the simplex method to solve this linear program. And the corner that you were given to start with was uh, three, four, five. So x3, x4, and x5. Okay, so we go back to our directions here. We do step zero, we write the inputs in a tableau, and we, uh, upper right corner gets a zero, and we use Gaussian elimination to reduce the expression in terms of the basic variables. So let's do that again. So again, we're gonna build a tableau. So the first thing is I just copy all of these terms here into a table. Okay, I'll start with the top row and I'll work my way down. So I'll have a uh, minus two, minus three, and zero. 1, 1, and then 2, minus 4, 2, 0, 2, and a 10, and a minus 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 5, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, and sorry, 3, there, okay? And uh, then again, I draw a little bar there to separate the right-hand side and draw a little bar here to separate off the objective function. And then in that upper right-hand corner there, as my directions say, upper right corner gets a zero. So I write a zero there. Okay. And, uh, and I want to reduce this in terms of x3, x4, and x5. That's the corner we're starting at. So I'll do an x3 and an x4 and an x5. And that'll be my basic set. And so what's the first thing I do? As step zero says, use Gaussian elimination to reduce the expression in terms of the basic variables B. 
So I'm going to reduce this tableau uh, in terms of x3 and x4 and x5. So what does that mean? It means this is the row for x3 and this is the column for x3. So I'd like to have a 1 here and zeros everywhere else. And look at how nice my problem is set up. I have zeros already, so I just need to turn that 2 into a 1. And similarly, this is the row for x4. This is the column for x4 because it's the fourth column. I'd like a 1 there, which I already have. And I'd like zeros everywhere else. And again, this is great because I've got two zeros already, so I just need to change that one. And then the last one I'll do is I have to reduce this row. Uh, I need this to be a 1, which it already is. And then I need these all to be zeros. Okay, so let's go through that. Um, so for x3, the reduction is easy. Uh, all we have to do is divide this 2 by 1. Sorry, divide this 2 by 2. So that 2 becomes a 1. That negative 4 becomes a negative 2. That 2 becomes a 1. The 0 stays. This 2 becomes a 1. 10 becomes a 5. Good. The reduction for x3 is done. I've got a 1 there and zeros everywhere else. Now I have to reduce for x4. So x4 is going to be in this row. I've got a 1 there. And I want zeros everywhere else, which just means I have to change that 1 into a 0. So that means I take this row and I'll subtract this row from it. Okay, so the top row minus the third row there. So 2 minus negative 1. Yeah, 2 minus negative 1 is minus 1. Uh, minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0 as I wanted it to be. 1 minus 1 also 0, and 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Okay, good. Now I've done reduction for x3 and for x4, and the last one is just x5. Um, again, I've got a 1 here already, which I'm happy with, and I need to take both of these 1s and turn them into zeros. So I take the second row and subtract the, the fourth, and I take the third row and I subtract the fourth. So the second row there, minus the third, sorry, minus the fourth, 1 minus negative 1 is uh, 2. Negative 2 minus 0 is uh, minus 2. 1 minus 0 is 1. 0 minus 0 is 0. And this is uh, uh, 1 minus 1, which is 0 as I wanted it to be. And this is 5 minus 3 is 2. And last thing I need, I want to uh, turn this 1 into a 0. Remember, I want a 1 here and zeros everywhere else. So I take this third row and subtract the fourth. So minus 1, minus negative 1, that's 0. 2 minus 0 is 2. 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, as I wanted it to be. And 5 minus 3 is 2. OK, good. This is my uh, starting simplex tableau. I've got everything here nicely expressed in terms of x3 and x4 and x5. I've copied the tableau down here from up there so you could see things more cleanly. This is the exact same tableau as that one. I've just copied things. Okay, so what do I do here? Now I've got everything nicely set up and I look at my chart. What do I do next? So after I've done my initial tableau and I've done Gaussian elimination to reduce the expression in terms of the basic variables, uh, what I do next is I ask, am I done? Are there any negative objective coefficients? Of course there are. Here there are two. There's uh, x1 and x2. Um, as I've said in lecture, whenever you have to decide between these things, um, it's totally your choice. I'm always going to set up problems so that you're guaranteed to find a fast solution if you pick the most negative solution, which in this case is, uh, is x2. So x2 is going to enter our basic set, and so we'd like to know uh, which variable is going to leave. Is it going to be x3 or x4 or x5? And so to uh, figure out which one that is, we do the minimum ratio test. We divide the rightmost column by the strictly positive entries for our incoming column. What does that mean? Again, that means I take these entries here, 2, 2, 3, and I divide them by z, these entries down here. But remember, I only do that uh, for those cases where the entries here are strictly positive. So that means I would take 2, and I'd say there's a minus 2 here, so I don't compute that ratio. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 3 divided by 0 is infinity. I don't do that ratio either because that's a 0. So in this iteration, there is only one valid ratio corresponding to x4. That means x4 is going to leave my basic set. 
and x2 is gonna enter. Okay, so I've decided x2 enters, x4 leaves. What does that mean? It means this row here now needs to be the row for x2 rather than being the row for x4. So that means I wanna have a one here and I'd like zeros everywhere else. Okay, so let's do that now. I want a one here, so I'll divide this row by two. So that two becomes a one, that one becomes a one half, zero and this two becomes a one, like this. And then what needs to happen? I need to have a zero here and I need to have a zero here. I need to have one there, but it's already there, so that's fine. So what do I do? I wanna turn this minus two into a zero, so I should take this row and add two times this one to it. Effectively, uh, you know, I, I just divided by two, so now I'm, I'm just undoing that and adding it up there. So two plus uh, two times zero is zero, minus two plus two times one is zero, one plus two times zero is one, zero plus two times one half is, uh, oh, sorry, is one. Ah, that one half should stay there. Uh, zero plus two times zero is zero, and two plus two times one is four. And, uh, yep, and then the last thing I need to do is uh, this negative five needs to become a zero. So I take this row and I add five times this row here. So minus one plus five times zero is uh, minus one. That doesn't change. Minus five plus five times one is zero, as I wanted it to be. Zero plus five times zero is zero. Zero plus five times one half is five halves. Uh, zero plus five times zero is zero, minus five plus five times one is actually zero now. So now I've got a zero. Last thing that I need to do here is uh, I've now done all my reductions, my row reductions. I've got a one there and zeros everywhere else. So this x4 now becomes an x2. And now this is my tableau uh, that I can do my next iteration on. So I'll, I'll copy this now onto new piece of paper. Copied my tableau here onto a, a new sheet of paper and now we'll do this step again. We ask, are we done? Are there any negative objective coefficients? Yes, there is. There's one right here. So x1 has a coefficient of negative one and uh, so we'd like to determine which of these variables is uh, going to leave. If x1 is going to enter my basic set, then we'll see which of these three should, uh, should leave. We do the minimum ratio test for that which means I take these values here, four, one, and three, and I divide by the entries here whenever they're strictly positive. In this case, I'd say four divided by two is two. One divided by zero, I don't count that ratio because I only compute these ratios for the cases where these values are strictly positive. And so one on zero is zero, we don't count that. This is a negative sign, so we don't compute three on negative one. So we only had one ratio in this case, and so we conclude that x3 is going to leave. So x1 is going to enter my basic set, and x3 is going to leave. That means that now what I want is I want this row here to be a row for x1 instead of for x3. So what does that mean? It means I wanna have a one here, and I want zeros here, here, and here. So I'd like a one there, which means I divide this row by two. So I'll do that now. Two becomes a one, zero stays. One becomes one half, one becomes one half, zero stays. Four on two is two. And I want zeros everywhere else. This is easy because I've just got negative ones in both of these. So I'll take this row and I'll add this one to it uh, to cancel out that negative one. And then similarly, I'll take this row and I'll add this one to it to get rid of that negative one. So I'll take this row up here and I'll add that one. What do I get? Minus one and one is zero as I wanted. Zero, zero is zero. Zero and one half is one half. Five halves and one half is uh, three. Zero and zero is zero. Zero and two is two. And uh, now I take this row and I add that row to it. Uh, so minus one and one is zero as I wanted. Zero and zero is zero. Zero and one half is one half. Zero and one half is one half. 1 and 0 is 1, 3 and 2 is 5. Okay, now I've got my, uh, I've got my rows, um, I've got this column now just as I want it. It's now expressed uh, in terms of x1 rather than x3. So I'll cross out that x3 now and I'll replace it with x1. 
Okay. Now I'm, I'm finished with that iteration. Now I've got a tableau uh, expressed in terms of x1, x2, and x5. And so I perform this step again, or I, I, I do the iteration again, and I ask, are there any negative objective coefficients? And I look at this, there are not. There are not any negative objective coefficients, therefore I'm done, and I've solved my problem. So once again, to recover the solution from the tableau, the values here in the right-hand side are equal to the values of these variables. So this corresponds to a solution with x1 equals 2, x2 equals 1, x5 is equal to 5, and x3 and x4 are equal to 0. And the objective value is given to me by taking the value up here and taking a minus sign. So that's minus 2. And that is a second example of solving a linear program with the simplex method. This is one final example, and it's also the same example that's uh, at the very beginning of your problem set. So you're welcome to follow along with that. I uh, wrote down all the steps there in, in uh, pretty, uh, pretty elaborate detail, but I'll work through it here as well. So uh, the linear program looks like this. You've now got six variables and three constraints. And so we'll, we'll work through this example. So again, the first step, you build your simplex tableau uh, and you do Gaussian elimination to express the uh, tableau in terms of the basic variables, which for this problem, uh, we're gonna start at B equals one, two, three. We'll start with x1, x2, x3 being the corner. All right, so let's write down our tableau. What does it look like? We have, uh, for the first row, 0, 2, 0, 1, minus 1, 1. So 0, uh, 2, 0, 1, minus 1, 1. And uh, next row down is 2, 0, minus 2, 0, minus 1, minus 1, 2, and then uh, minus 2, 2, minus 1, 3, 1, 1, 2, minus 2, 0, 3, 0, 3, 3, 3. And now I'll draw my usual separators there. Uh, to separate the right-hand side of the objective function. And then again, upper right-hand corner gets a zero. And then last thing is we're gonna start at one, two, and three. And so my, my corners will be x1, x2, and x3. And so what I wanna do now is reduce this tableau as I've been doing throughout in terms of these basic variables. So what does that mean? This is the row for x1. The first column is the column for x1. So I'd like a one here and I'd like zeros everywhere else. This is the row for x2. This is the column for x2. So I'd like a one here and zeros everywhere else. This is the row for x3. This is the column for x3. I'd like a one here and zeros everywhere else. Okay, now you'll notice this is set up uh, kind of nicely so that the algebra is pretty simple, which uh, is uh, something that is, um, you know, fortunate for me as, as the guy who's solving this. So, okay, so I'd like, a, I'd like a one here and I'd like zeros everywhere else. Since I've got a two and I've got negative twos there, I think I'll uh, zero these things out first, then I'll divide this row by two. So I'll take this second row and I'll add this row to it. That'll kill that minus two. And I'll do the same thing down here. I'll take this row and I'll add that row to it. That'll kill this one. So, okay, we'll take, uh, add these numbers down there. So this minus two becomes a zero as we wanted. Two and zero is two. Minus two and minus one is minus three. Zero and three is three. Minus one and one is zero. Minus one and one is zero. Two and two is four. And uh, similarly, I add uh, these values to these down here. So two and minus two is zero. Zero and zero is zero. Negative two and three is one. Zero and zero there. Minus one and three is two. Minus one and three is two. And two and three is five. And good, so now I've got zeros there. And so I divide this row here by, uh, by one. Sorry, I divide it by two. So that two becomes a one. Zero stays, minus two 
becomes minus one. Zero stays, minus one on two is minus one half. Minus one on two is minus one half. And two on two is one. Okay, great, so now I've uh, done all my reductions necessary for x1, so I do the same thing for x2 and for x3. So I look for x2, I wanna have a one here and zeros everywhere else. So I'd like a zero there, and I've got uh, twos in both of these, so I'll take this row and I'll subtract this one. So zero minus zero is zero, two minus two is zero as I want it to be. Zero minus negative three is, uh, is positive three. One minus three is minus two. Negative one minus zero is negative one. One minus zero is one. Zero minus four is negative four. And then the last thing I do here is I take this uh, I take this row and I divide it by two because I have a I want to have a one here and zeros everywhere else. So I divide this whole row by two. So that two becomes a one. The minus three becomes a minus three halves. Three becomes positive three halves. Zero stays. Zero stays. Four becomes a two. Good. So I'm almost done here. I've got. Uh, a one and zeros everywhere else for x1, and one and zeros everywhere else for x2, and I just need to have a one and zeros everywhere else for x3. Now I'm looking at that three halves, uh, that, I'm giving that one a dirty look, because that's, uh, that's not as much fun, but <clears throat> anyway, it's just multiplying by fractions uh, like anything else. So, okay, um, I'd like to have a one here, which I already have, uh, so I'm lucky about that, and I need to have zeros everywhere else. I'll save this one for last. So first of all, the easy one, I have a minus one and I'd like that to be a zero. So I take this row and I add this one to it. That'll cancel out that minus one. So one and zero is one, zero and zero is zero, minus one and one, zero, zero, zero. Minus one and two, that's, uh, sorry, minus one half and two, that's uh, three halves. And negative one half plus two is also three halves. And one plus five is, uh, six uh, and I'd like to uh, so good I've got I'm looking at this column here so I've zeroed that one out I want zeros there and there as well and so for uh, for this uh, to take care of this three I'll take this top row and I'll subtract three times this bottom row so zero minus three times zero zero minus three times zero three minus three times one is zero as I want it to be minus two minus three times zero is minus two minus one minus three times two is minus seven and one minus three times two is minus five and negative four minus three times five is negative 19. Almost done, I've just got that annoying three halves to deal with. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take this row and add three halves times this row to take care of that. So zero plus three halves times zero is the same. One plus three halves times zero is one. Minus three halves plus three halves is zero as I want it to be. Three halves plus three halves times zero is zero. Zero plus three halves times two is uh, two. Sorry, is three. Zero plus three halves times two is three. Yep, zero plus three halves times two is three. And two plus three halves times five is two plus three halves times five, which is uh, uh, 19 on two. Okay, that's my zeroth iteration. That's the longest one because I had to do lots of row reduction. Um, now I'll copy this tableau down into something cleaner. This is the same tableau I just had a moment ago and I've just made things cleaner. So then we go back to our uh, description of the simplex method and we ask, am I done? Oops. Okay, and I am not done because yes indeed there are negative objective function coefficients. Um, again, you could pick any of these. I'm gonna pick x5 because this is the most negative term. It's negative seven. So we'll say x5 is gonna enter and so we'll do the minimum ratio test to determine if one, two, or three should leave. So how do I do that? Again, I look at the terms in the right-hand side over here, and I divide by the terms in the entering column. So I take, and I divide these things on the right by these things on the left. So I take six divided by three halves, uh, which is what, that's uh, 12 on three, that's four. I have 19 halves on three, on three, which is 19 on six, a little more than a little more than three, and then I have five on two, which is five halves. 
Okay, so five halves is the smallest of these three, and therefore I'd say x3 is going to leave, and x5 is going to enter. So now what do I do? I do my Gaussian elimination so that I want, um, I now want a, a one here and I want zeros here, here, and here. So what do I do? I'd like a one here, so I'll divide this row by two. So that one becomes a one half, zero stays, the two becomes a one, two on two is one, and five on two is five halves. I'll scratch these out so I don't get tripped up by them later. Um, good. <clears throat> and so now what needs to happen? I need to get a zero here and a zero here and a zero here. So I'll take uh, I'll take this row there and I'll take uh, this row minus three times this row because I want that three to get zeroed out. So zero, zero, one minus three, zero, zero minus three times one half is minus three halves. Three halves minus three times zero is three halves. Three minus three times one is zero as I wanted it to be. 3 minus 3 times 1 is, is also 0. And uh, 19 halves minus 15 halves is uh, 2. Sorry, 19 halves minus 3 times 5 halves, that's where that came from, is 2. So that 19 halves now becomes a 2, like that. Okay, good. So I've got a 1 and a 0, and I want a 0 there and a 0 there. So I've got a, a 3 halves. And I've got a one there, so I'll take this row and I'll subtract three halves times this one. So what does that do? One minus three halves times zero is one. Zero minus three halves times zero is zero. Zero minus three halves uh, times one half is minus three fourths. Zero minus three halves times zero is zero. Three halves minus three halves times one is zero, as I wanted it to be. Three halves minus uh, three halves times one is also zero, and then six minus three halves times five halves is six minus uh, 15 on four, which is nine fourths. So nine on four like that. And then the last one I take, uh, I have a minus seven here and a one there, so I'm gonna add, take this row and add seven times uh, this row down here, so uh, 0 plus 7 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 7 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 7 times 1 half is 7 halves, minus 2, and there's a 0 there, so that stays, minus 7 plus 7 times 1 is 0 as I wanted it to be, minus 5 plus 7 times 1 is 2, and then negative 19 plus uh, 7 times 5 halves is a negative 19 plus 35 halves, which is uh, negative uh, three halves. Okay, that's my that's one iteration of the simplex method. So now I've I've done that. I've now uh, oh, and let's see. I had x three leaving and x five replacing. So I'll take that x three and I'll replace that with x five. Okay, that's my tableau at the end of this iteration. And now I'll do another one. I'll copy the table down here to clean things up. This is the same tableau I had before. I've just made things nice and neat. So um, now I begin another iteration and I ask, am I done? I am not done because there's a negative two here. That tells me that x4 is going to enter my basic set. And so we need to know which of these three variables is going to leave. So again, to do that, I perform the minimum ratio test. And that means I take each value in the right hand side. And uh, if the corresponding value in the column for the uh, incoming variable is strictly positive, we write down that number. So I have a 9 fourths here and a 0 there, so I don't have a ratio for that. 2 divided by 3 on 2 is uh, divided by 3 on 2 is 4 thirds. 5 halves on 0, I don't count that. So therefore I only had in this situation a 1 valid ratio, and therefore I conclude that x2 is going to enter my basic set, sorry, x2 is going to leave my basic set, and x4 is going to enter. Okay, so now I row reduce this tableau so that this row here, instead of uh, being the row for x2, it should be the row for x4. So I wanna have a one here, and I want zeros everywhere else. So the first thing I'll do is I need to turn this three halves into a one, so I'll multiply this row by two thirds. So this one becomes a two thirds, this minus three halves becomes a minus one. This three halves becomes a one. 
that zero stays, that zero stays. Uh, two times two thirds is now four thirds. Okay, and then the last thing I do is I've got zeros here and here already, which makes me happy. And I need to turn that negative two into a zero. So I take this top row and I add two times this row over here. Okay, so zero plus two times zero is zero. Uh, zero plus two times uh, two thirds is four thirds. Uh, seven halves plus two times one is uh, three halves. Sorry, seven halves plus two times negative one is, uh, is three halves. Uh, negative two plus two times one is zero as I wanted it. Those zeros don't change. That doesn't change. Negative three halves um, plus two times uh, four thirds is uh, negative three halves plus eight thirds. And that's seven on six. Okay, and now I've done all the reduction I need to. I've got my my um, oh, and then uh, now since I've successfully reduced this row for x four, this x two now becomes an x four, like that. Okay, and now that iteration is done. And now what do I do? I start a new iteration and I ask, are there any negative terms up here? There are not. There's a four thirds and a three halves and a two. So I'm done. And so I write down my solution. What is my solution? My solution has x one equals nine fourths. Uh, x4 and x5 are 4 thirds and 5 halves equals 4 thirds x5 is equal to 5 halves and the other variables are equal to 0 x2 equals 0, x3 equals 0 and x6 is equal to 0 and the objective value it's this thing here uh, flip the signs the objective value is negative 7 on 6 so that is uh, the third simplex method problem. Hopefully by now things are looking pretty boring. That's all.